Today, we're gonna to be talking about what it really takes to become an entrepreneur and the steps you're gonna to need to make along the way. I'm Brady Nash, and this is The Accidental Entrepreneur. Owning a business is a relatively common dream for a lot of people to have, you know? Owning a business, calling the shots, making lots of money. I mean, who doesn't have that dream once in their life, right? But have you ever thought about what it really takes to run that business? They say entrepreneurs are people that will, you know, run their own business and work 60 to 80 hours a week so they don't have to work 40 hours a week at a job. There are many reasons to start a business. Maybe you have a cool invention, some idea that you really think could solve a problem and it, maybe it's your own problem. A lot of ideas I know I've had actually came from our own pain points, some issue I had and I looked around and no one had solved it and, or they solved it and I thought it wasn't good enough and I thought we could do a, a better job of it. Uh, maybe it's just the, you want the freedom, you want the flexibility, you don't like being told what to do, you don't want someone else telling you when you have to do something or where you have to go and you know, I can tell you a lot of people, they don't want to have a boss. I really believe that that's, uh, that's a myth, people that are thinking, hey, I'm going to own my own business so I can do whatever the heck I want because you always have a boss. The boss's name is customer. And you do need to cater towards your customers, their needs, their wants, or you're probably not gonna have a very successful business. We're gonna get into the details of the top four things I can think of that you should be thinking about um, getting into the entrepreneurship or business journey. Number one, know what you want. Not everyone wants the same thing out of life, and that's okay. Um, so you need to define what you want your business to look like. Do you want it to be, and there's no right or wrong answer other than the wrong answer would be you not following what you want, you following what someone else wants or what someone else thinks success looks like. I can tell you I've got friends that you know, have businesses that people, you know, they only, it's them and one or two other people and people say, well, oh, you've got a nice little hobby business, almost like as a slight as they're not doing enough. Well, I think that's completely wrong. The business should serve the business owner, the entrepreneur of what they're looking to get out of that business, right? And so business could be as simple as I make paintings and I go to events on the weekends where I sell my paintings or my arts and my crafts. There's nothing wrong, like that's a business, that's an entrepreneur. So for the sake of this video, um, let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. Are you talking about a side project where you do side work? It could be painting people's houses. It could be carpentry work. It could be electrical work. It could be art. Um, it could be, you know, copywriting. It could be doing Facebook marketing. I mean, again, when you're looking at a business, what do you want it to be? Do you want it just to be some side hustle, some extra spending cash, or do you actually legitimately want to build a business that you want to build and grow to where you're making hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, do you wanna have employees or do you not? Again, I'm not telling you what you should want, it's what do you want? And these are things you should be thinking about. Um, after the fact of you solving, hey, what problem am I solving? What's the business I wanna be in? What do you want that to look like? Not saying it has to be there today, but what's your end goal? What is your, what's your 10 year plan, your five year plan, your three year, your one year, what do you want it to be? And if you had what you wanted, envision that whatever you think you have, um, you got it. Would you be happy? And why? What, what part of it makes you happy? Is it the freedom that really makes you happy? Is it the amount of money you're making? Is that really the goal? And with that money, um, it allows you to have the home or put your kids in the school. You want the, uh, uh, to be in the school program they want to be at or the private school or is it the um, freedom that that money gives you is it early retirement like these are things you should be thinking about of what you want um, and how big you want to scale and grow because the the following questions are going to be determined based upon how you de define this first one because how you invest into your business the time the effort the money the resources in your mindset really change based upon these answers. So know what you want out of your business, know what success would look like to you. Imagine it's not a matter of if you can do it, imagine you've done it. Imagine how you define success that you've done it now that you have it, is there anything that's wrong with it? Because we wanna make sure that the goal you're going at is actually where you wanna end up and then we're gonna work backwards and start de determining the steps you've gotta take to have success. Otherwise you're set up for failure right from the start and we don't wanna do that. Number two, understand the sacrifices. So now that you understand where you wanna be, let's talk about 
those sacrifices. For me, you know, I dropped out of college. Uh, it was my second semester freshman year and I knew to go after my dream. And I was really excited about it that I needed to focus on it. You know, I didn't go out and party. I didn't, you know, I wasn't pursuing, um, you know, having a family. I wasn't, you know, probably doing a lot of things 18, 19, 20 year olds were doing, which is having fun. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but for me, I knew one day I wanted to have a family. I wanted to have a successful business and I knew there was no better time to hustle right now because I had the least amount of responsibility that I would ever have when I was 18. And so from the moment I turned 18, I knew where I wanted to be in the future and it was going all in right now that I wasn't going to mess around. I wasn't going to sleep in late. I wasn't going to party. I was sold out for the business. I was only getting four to maybe you know five hours of sleep a night. That was something that was important to me. I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just saying that's how driven... I was at sacrificing. It was the, whatever it takes, I'm gonna make this successful. I think about reputation. I think about people thought it was crazy to drop out of school. Not everyone's gonna believe in you. It can affect relationships. Those of you that have done network marketing, oh, talk about sacrifices, right? Talk about burning relationships and friends and people that don't wanna to talk to you because they think you're gonna to try to sell them on something, right? There's a lot of sacrifices, I believe, in uh, early stages of business and entrepreneurship that people make that people look, look later and say you're really smart, but they might have not have been thinking you were smart when you were doing it, right? Hindsight, you know, it's 2020. And so just really understand that I believe outside of just a random side hustle, you know, business, if you really want to go into business, um, and most businesses are so competitive, you, if you don't have the whatever it takes mentality, it's going to be very, very difficult. Number three, play the long game. So I've been an entrepreneur at the time of this video shooting for, let's see, 16 years. And one of the big parts of our success was our ability to reinvest into the business. Meaning when we started selling, and this was in payment processing when we really got going, um, after a year and a half, two year stint of network marketing, we got into payments uh, September of 05. And that whole business was on recurring revenue. We were using credit cards to finance the business. Um, we were doing prac studies. You know, the studies you go on on a weekend, they give you a drug, maybe placebo, and they draw your blood every couple of hours, you know, and make a thousand to two thousand bucks on a couple of weekends. We did that. So when people say blood, sweat, tears, like that's legitimately what we did. And so when you start making money, typically you're not paying yourself. It's going back into getting yourself, hopefully, better equipment. Um, better software, better solutions, better marketing, business cards, um, relationships, and you know how do you grow your business? Almost everything you make early on needs to be reinvested. Uh, where I see some people get into trouble is they maybe start doing some of those basic things, but they stop, meaning why have QuickBooks when you can do a spreadsheet? Why have a CRM when I can have a spreadsheet um, or a Rolodex? or you know, I can have contacts on my phone. And so some of their ideas of saving money to run lean ultimately affect their growth, the speed of the growth and the long-term vision of where they're going. They're handicapping themselves. And they're typically entrepreneurs are very competent people. Um, they're very ambitious and they have the mindset of, I can do anything, I'll figure it out. And they're not wrong, but it's again the, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And you need to, as early as you can, even though I know you're trying to be resourceful and creative, find ways to start using tools that are gonna allow you to scale, are gonna allow you to automate things so you can get back to focusing on uh, growing your business, which really comes down to sales and marketing. Um, yes, support's important. Yes, technology is, uh, is important. But ultimately, being able to sell your product. If no one's buying your product, you're not going to have a business. You're not going to have the money to fix everything else. And so I really believe even though it's all important, everything starts with being able to sell and getting people that will buy your product. Again, this is going back to um, where you want your business to be. And so I'm going to talk about thinking about the long-term vision. For years, again, we weren't making money. In fact, when I was 20 years old, if I had paid myself like a sales rep, like I was paying, I could have been making $50,000 a month. I was making between four and five. I'm not saying to complain because that's still a good income for a lot of people, but I'm just saying, imagine being able to say, hey, you had 50,000 bucks a month. Do you want it yourself? I think most people would be like, holy cow, I could live in a nice house. I can buy a nice car. I can pretty much do whatever I want today, right? We didn't. 
because I knew that if I had gotten to that lifestyle, I'd be trapped. I wouldn't really be able to scale and grow it because I was taking all the money to myself. And eventually you get to the point where you, yeah, you people improve their lifestyle to a point they can't afford to take a step back. Meaning they buy the nice house, they buy, they buy the nice car, they get accustomed to a lifestyle when their business is going well. And they can't afford to take the steps back to make those investments to keep, keep scaling and growing. And for us, we were constantly reinvesting, thinking about long-term vision, long-term dream of what we wanted because that was important to us. So we reinvested that money. Instead of taking 50, we reinvested 45 and took five to keep parlaying into all these years later, we have a multi-million dollar businesses. We're acquiring multi-million dollar businesses because of the business model we built and recurring revenue. We've made the Inc. 5000 list for now six years in a row going on. I believe it'll be several more. And I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying, well, how do you keep growing? It's because we keep reinvesting. I'm not pulling everything off for myself to go buy stupid crap. Um, or even if it's not stupid, things I don't need. I'm not saying going on a trip, I'm not saying buying nice things is wrong. I like nice things too. And over the years, I've been solely increasing what I'm able to do with my family. But knowing when to do that and knowing that it's a trade-off, you know, short-term versus long-term. You can take the money now, you can buy some nice things now, or if you can reinvest it, you can buy nicer things later. So you've got to define what's important to you and maybe right now enjoying your money um, when you're 30 or 40 or, or 50, maybe that's important. You don't want to push it out another five years or 10 years. That's okay. That's why I go back to understand what you want, understand where you're going. And so if you want to build a long-term game for us, I've been kicking the can down, uh, down the road a long time as far as I'm keeping that snowball building and growing. So define again where you want it so you know how big you want that snowball to be when you start taking more versus what you invest. And that can change over the years. Number four, either you're in or you're out. I don't believe that you can half commit. I'm a light switch, I don't have a dimmer, either I'm all in or I'm out, either I'm engaged or I'm not engaged. Outside of a hobby business that you kind of do on the side and some side hustle, that's fine. That's something you can kick around and do. If it's a project-based thing, you've got a network, that's fine. But in most businesses, if you really wanna have a, like a, a big business, um, where you've got employees, if you're a restaurant, if you're a, a marketer, a web developer, like in my opinion, you've got to be all in or there's competition. There's so much competition that they're more committed. They're better at it than you because they're learning. They're using the better technology. They're more efficient than you. Like you can't compete. And so oftentimes I look at ideas. Lots of people have ideas and honest to God, typically it's not the idea that makes a business successful. Most of the times it's just execution. For example, what is it? Nine out of 10 uh, restaurants fail in the first two years. And then of those that make it, another nine out of 10 fail in the following five years. Do you think it's because a restaurant's a bad idea? Or do you think it was the execution of the restaurant idea what made it fail or succeed? It's the execution. It's like a payment processing company. We do really well. We've knocked out most of our competition. Is the payment processing company a good idea or a bad idea? There's a lot of people that have failed. So it doesn't mean it's a bad idea? Well, no, there's companies that are doing it. Well, it's a good idea. Same thing like restaurants. We can go and we can eat some great food and there's restaurants that go out of business every day. It's not that having a restaurant, it's do you have good food? It's the execution of the experience. Do you have a place that leaves um, your customers wanting to come back? Do you have a good model where people can easily order your food, whether that's online or delivery or you have a good marketing to draw people into your business? Do you have a good location? Meaning it's the execution of the idea, not the idea itself. There's people that start insurance companies. Some are wildly successful, some fail. Some start IT technology companies. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? It's not the idea, it's the execution of the idea. And so when I stress to a lot of young entrepreneurs, it's great you have an idea. Start taking actions, execute, learn, research, but don't just fill your head full of knowledge you know, uh, they say knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Execution trumps knowledge every single day. Take action. This is the best way you're going to learn. Make adjustments. Don't have an ego about it. Admit when you made a mistake. That's part of learning. That is education. Uh, my college was very short-lived. The best education knowledge I can get is you actually doing it. Find someone that you believe in. Find someone you look up to. Find someone that is where you want to be. 
right? They've done what you want to do. You want to be a successful dentist or plumber or electrician or hairstylist. Find someone that you think is the best of the best and copy them. Copy the heck out of them. Success leaves clues. Follow it. But if you don't, don't waste your time because business can be super stressful. If you're not that passionate about it, you just kind of want to do it on the side. It's likelihood going to be very stressful and it's going to fail. And that's why I'm telling you, get in or get out and decide and focus on whatever life you want in your career, but commit to it. <sighs> Thanks for spending your time with me today. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. Comment, leave me notes. I do read them. Um, if you have any ideas for any future episodes you want me to talk about, please ask me. Uh, this is for you guys. I don't need to listen to myself talk. That's not fun. I want to provide value to you. And I look forward to talking to you all next time.